This over here is a centrifugal pump. Liquid comes in to the suction end over here. The pump is sitting in there. It's being driven by a motor through this shaft that over there is called the coupling. And then the liquid pressure is increased and discharged this way. Today's question is pretty simple. If I have some suction pressure to a centrifugal pump, let's say it's one bar, and I discharge it at say two bar, what happens if I increase the suction pressure by half a bar? Does the discharge go up by a corresponding half a bar to two and a half? Here is the centrifugal pump we will be using. I'm taking water from the tap and we will use this tap to manipulate the inlet pressure of the pump. I am then running the hose into the pump where I have a pressure gauge measuring the pump suction pressure. I also have a pressure gauge on the discharge and then the discharge hose connects to this common garden fitting which we can throttle. And because we're process engineers, we love our flow diagrams. Here's our setup. We have a battery limit, meaning anything upstream of this block is not in my control. We have our tap at our wall, which we will show as a valve. We have a pump suction hose with a pressure gauge on the inlet. This pressure will be regulated manually using the tap. Then we have the pump, the discharge line with the pressure gauge, and finally the valve, the hose fitting, which we can use to throttle. Here's my suction pressure gauge and my discharge pressure gauge. The discharge gauge is easy. The dial indicates the pressure in bar. The suction pressure gauge shows PSI in black and kilograms per square centimeter in red. Since a kilogram per square centimeter is equal to 0.98 bar, it's good enough to read off the red figures as bar in this case. The pump is off and I open the tap. Once I have vented all the air out of the system, I close the end at the discharge and you can see that the pressure, the suction and discharge equalize at the main supply of 3.5 bar. This is the maximum suction pressure I will be able to obtain. Now I'm going to open the discharge valve fully and have the supply valve only slightly open. Because the supply of water will be low with the supply valve mostly closed, and the entire resistance of the system being really low with the hose fully open, there will be no pressure in the system. But we will still have some flow. We are now going to start the pump. The valve positions I have are the exact opposite of how I would normally start a pump. Usually I want as little resistance on the pump suction as possible. This includes when I'm designing suction piping to pumps. That is why using a long suction hose here is really bad form. Long lines, throttled valves and blocked filters on the suction side of a pump can cause low flow cavitation, which can damage my pump. So I would normally want to start with the supply valve fully open. The reason I want the discharge valve mostly closed when I start the pump is because I still want there to be some flow through the system, but I want that flow to be low because a motor draws its peak current on startup. The more flow I expect from the pump as soon as I start the motor, the higher that peak will be. This is especially a problem on very large motors where we are concerned about overcurrent and damage to the motor. So we want to throttle the discharge. Nevertheless, I'm going to start the pump with the valves in the opposite positions. Not very exciting, huh? Remember, there is a flow through my system because my supply valve is cracked open, but it's really low and not enough to register any pressure on either gauge. I am starving the pump of flow and extended periods like this risk damaging the pump. I need to open the supply valve more. Now let's put the valves in the correct positions. Here my pump is off. I have the supply valve fully open, which is why I'm reading 3 bar. The reason it isn't the 3.5 bar we had a moment ago when we shut off the discharge is because now we have pressure drop in my suction hose. My pump is primed. Let's start it. 
there are two things that happen when the pump starts. The discharge pressure goes up. That's obvious. That's the point of the pump. And the suction pressure drops. This is a little less obvious. The reason the suction pressure drops is because starting the pump causes the flow rate throughout the whole system to increase. The increased flow rate also increases the pressure drop between my battery limit and my suction pressure gauge. So the gauge reads lower. Now let's consider the initial question I was asked. The question was, if I start with say one bar into the pump and two bar out of the pump, does increasing the suction pressure by half a bar also increase the discharge by half a bar? To answer this question, we're going to take our pump that's running and slowly start to open the supply valve to increase the suction pressure. It should be obvious that the flow throughout the system will increase as we open because usually opening the tap causes more water to flow. But I totally get why you may be at risk of overthinking this one we will keep track of both the suction and discharge pressures as we open up. And that's it. The supply valve is fully open and this is the maximum flow I can get through my system. You can see that despite my battery limit pressure being three and a half bar, at full flow the maximum suction pressure I get is 1.9 bar because of the pressure drop of the long small diameter hose. Definitely not best practice. So you can see that increasing the suction pressure obviously increases the discharge pressure but the differential pressure across the pump drops. It does not stay the same. But you already knew that from looking at your pump curve. Increasing suction pressure to a pump increases the flow through it and increased flow through a centrifugal pump comes with a lower differential pressure. So in our hypothetical scenario, increasing suction pressure by half a bar would cause the discharge pressure to increase, but that increase would be less than half a bar. The resultant pressure would be less than two and a half. So the best way to think about all these kinds of problems when it comes to centrifugal pumps is to think, is my action increasing or decreasing flow through the pump? If it increases the flow through the pump, the differential has to drop. If I drop the flow through the pump, the differential has to increase.